Hey guys, NJ here. So there's probably going to be a point where you guys will want to flash and upgrade your FR Sky receivers. Um, you know, updates do come out. Uh, it might be that you need to update the firmware um, because of a release, or it might be that um, the the particular the receiver that you've got happens to be on the wrong type of firmware so it might be um, running EULBT and you want the non EULBT firmware etc etc so there are various products you can get from FR Sky um, uh, USB interfaces etc um, there's there's lots of options in terms of plugging into the receiver and updating it but with um, a couple of cables it's actually a really easy thing to do yourself with just your uh, Tyrannus be it this nice new X7 or uh, the X9D anything basically with the module bay on the back um, they're all pin all the pinouts are wired the same so this will work so the next step is to go to the FR Sky website and get the appropriate firmware for your receiver um, when you get the firmware for the receiver you'll probably Probably find that inside of there there will be uh, two files one for EULBT which is for everywhere inside Europe and then non EULBT for everywhere outside of Europe so make sure you're flashing the right one uh, for your region and also for your uh, transmitter because they have to match if the if the radio is on the um, non EU non EULBT firmware then uh, you'll need to match the correct uh, non EULBT firmware on your receiver so what you you need to do is then basically get that file it's an FRK file when you selected the right one uh, extract the zip folder that you download get the FRK file that, that is the one you want and then you're going to put it onto the SD card of the uh, Tyrannus. Now you can either pull the SD card out here and pop it in a card reader and do it that way or you can put this into bootloader mode which is very easy you just hold the trim tabs in and hit the power button and it's the same on the X9D, same procedure. Now you can basically uh, plug into your computer via your USB port, and that should then bring you up a browse window so that you can actually navigate to the firmwares folder on the uh, Tyrannus, and then you can put that file in the firmwares folder. If I spin this guy over, I've taken the door off the back, you can see we have these um, uh, five pins here on the back. And I'll show you a quick close up, but basically, you have the uh, S port um, signal on this lowest pin here. You have the ground on the next pin up and power on the pin up from that. So these, these bottom three connectors are the ones that you would need. Now what I did was I took a cable, uh, just a standard servo cable, and I've wired it as such. So if I plug that in, you'll see like that we have, as I said, S port signal on the bottom there. Uh, ground and then power and then on this end I've uh, put in one of these micro GST connectors that will plug straight into the XSR but um, depending on what your connector uh, is going into your particular receiver um, you know these cables are pennies so it's, it's never a bad idea to have a few spares of these kicking around anyway I think I'd rub this off of a uh, uh, a UART connector on a, an old flight controller um, but literally that is only the only cable that you need to make up um, and then over here you can see this on my, my Beast X which is almost flight ready I've got my XSR in the top here and there is the connections and you can actually see from here uh, I think just about uh, in the on the XSR um, right at the edge I've got the S bus signal uh, the next pin across I don't use the next pin across from that is S port then power and then on the inside uh, of the connector you have ground um, so again the main thing is especially with these cables make sure that, the, that you wire these up so that the pinouts are correct you don't want to put the voltage across the wrong pin and fry something so what we're going to do is quite literally pull the uh, connector out and we're going to put this one in and there we go so we now have uh, our cable coming out of there and going into the XSR um, so that's all seated up and nicely done so with that now all plugged up the next thing to do is to power on the Tyrannus welcome to open TX and we're going to hold down the uh, settings button here and that will take us to this page here in the radio setup page we're going to move across to page 2 and then we are now going to scroll down to that firmware folder which we uh, talked about earlier 
and we're going to click into that and now you can see there is that file that I put in uh, on the, via the PC which is the XSR LBT build 151118.frk so that is the file that we want and then what we're going to do is we're going to go down to select it we're going to hold down the enter button on it and it now says flash external device or flash internal module. Now obviously we do not want to flash the internal module of that, we want to flash the external device. So we're going to click go on that. And I don't know if you can see, but we now have some light going on you can see that the green light on the XSR is on and the red light is slowly flashing as this is now writing to the XSR. Incidentally it's exactly the same procedure um, with the correct firmware for the internal module of course you select internal module should you want to update the firmware on the, the X7 itself exactly the same thing going on here you just have to make sure you download the right firmware for the internal XJT module and then you flash that uh, internal module instead of using an external flash like we're doing here. And as you can see we're almost done, there we go, finished and then it's also um, disconnected the power so it's, it's all finished, all the lights are off on the XSR, uh, the next thing to do is just to exit out of that. We're going to turn this off and then I'm going to go to the back here disconnect that, move this out of the way and then finally disconnect the XSR like so and I can plug the original cable back in and with that all done and that connected back up we should now have we should now have Yep, everything's working. So um, we're all back up and running, no issues at all. Didn't actually have to do any rebinding, that's all remembered. Um, but we are now running the latest firmware on the XSR. So that's all uh, worked out really well, and it was literally a very simple cable um, that needed making up. And now you can flash uh, any other XSRs that you have or X4Rs. You know, this is just a useful thing to have. So put a bit of tape around it and label it so you don't get confused about what this is later. Keep it in your box, very useful. Cheers.